Um, and welcome. Good morning and good afternoon, um, depending on whether or where you're joining us. Um, today we're going to talk about a little bit why Alfresco for software and technology vendors, really why OEM Alfresco. And there's a little bit of a history, and, and I'll go through it a little bit later on. But I think the main takeaway point today is that Alfresco is not only an application that end users can uh, can use to manage documentation or manage content on the website, but really the way Alfresco has been architected and the way we built it um, on open source and open standards components really allows you to utilize Alfresco for content services meaning that we live in a very content-centric world, and today's solutions touch data and content in some way or another, and Alfresco can provide those services instead of your team really reinventing the repository or reinventing content services, you can leverage Alfresco um, to really enable that. So I'm um, here on slide number two. Hopefully everybody can hear me okay and, and we're on that slide. But why Alfresco to build solutions? I think first and foremost is that Alfresco, you might want to look at it as content management 2.0. Um, the kind of the legacy and the experience of the team that has written uh, the code um, and also the executives in our companies all came from content management backgrounds. Um, and this was really their second go-around as far as uh, building a content management platform. Um, many of you might know that John Newton, who is the co-founder of Documentum, is the co-founder of Alfresco, and he brought over his uh, ex-Documentum team to, to build the repository. We also have people from Interwoven, Vignette, OpenText, and FileNet um, as well on our team. So really, it is an experienced team. So I wouldn't look at Alfresco as an open source project that was created um, by some people in their basement, but really by people who have been in the space for 15 plus years and really understand the ins and outs. And the way it was architected was we wanted to bring a platform that was very usable um, for software vendors. And that really means that it's modular and really plug and play to a certain degree as far as integrating it within your solutions. So if you only have a need for one particular element, um, you can use that element. For instance, search or workflow, etc. And Luis is going to go into uh, some of the specifics later on, but I just kind of want to set a high level from a business standpoint um, that Alfresco is a little bit like Lego pieces that you can utilize to build your solutions and products. I think another important point is the open source economics. Um, the new business model uh, for us and many other successful companies has been all around providing the support. This is really where we add value and, and really where software vendors should be adding value in the sense that we don't have large upfront licensing fees. Um, what our business is to support our end customers and support our OEM partners. And since we really don't invest that much in sales and marketing, um, any of the revenue that we do does go back into R&D and, and uh, innovation. Plus, the platform, the way it was architected, um, is much more performant than uh, some of the legacy platforms that are out there. Um, you have to realize that most of the content man management vendors, um, were, their solutions were built almost pre the Internet or pre the, the Web 2.0 days. So that is legacy software. Alfresco, on the other hand, um, has always tried to utilize the newest innovations and the newest um, kind of web-based components to build our, our solution. So you're not getting any new code. I mean, you're not getting old code, but you're getting new 100% Java, 100% open standards. Transparency is another piece, I think, that is, should be very important. Um, when you partner with Alfresco, you kind of get best of both worlds in the sense that you do get uh, the ability to utilize Alfresco in an OEM um, setting, but you also get the transparency of open source. And what that actually boils down to is that you receive source code. So that is source code that you can utilize, you can see, um, you can modify, and then include in your solution. 
And then there's the ownership piece of it, um, is that you retain ownership of any modifications that you make to El Fresco code when you're in an OEM uh, partnership. So if you have to uh, do any integration or write any pieces on top of or to extend El Fresco, those are yours to keep. That's definitely very important um, since you obviously wouldn't want to share that with, with the open source community. So I think it might be good to, uh, uh, to discuss a little bit about the Alfresco distributions, because um, I think many people understand that we do have two um, that are very visible on our website. We have what we call the Alfresco community. This is the 100% open source GPO licensed product. The way we like to view this is this is more of our laboratory. So this is the code that our engineers use to actually develop and innovate in. Um, sometimes we might even have more features and functionality than our enterprise product. But again, this is kind of where we're playing around, trying to introduce new features, um, and trying to extend the platform. This is not production-ready code. Um, but it is something that you can download and at least get a sense for how Alfresco will, uh, will interact with your system and kind of run it through its paces. Second, we have the Enterprise Edition. So this is um, the software distribution that is only available to our customers. Um, you can download it also as a 30-day trial, but this is the code that you'll be receiving when you're a customer or a partner of Alfresco. One important piece is that there isn't necessarily an, an upgrade path between community and enterprise. So I do encourage people who, who are serious about using Alfresco in production to start out with the trial. Um, but enterprise really means that this is the code that we bring in-house. We take a snapshot of community and then harden it. And by hardening, what we mean is that we make sure that all the features and functionality, A, are useful for our customers, but B, that everything is running together and is fully QA'd. We do have a whole QA team um, that does run Alfresco through uh, many, many tests, and this is obviously the, the service that we provide because the enterprise code is actually what contains the, the patches and the bug fixes. Um, and again, this is what Alfresco, the company, makes uh, their business on, providing support for Alfresco Enterprise. Now, we do have what, what we do segment as a third version, and this is the OEM version. The way to look at this is that this is the Alfresco Enterprise code, uh, but it is licensed under some very flexible OEM terms. And what I mean by that is that you not only get the source code, but you get Alfresco under a proprietary license. And by proprietary, I mean that it's not open source. Um, because obviously the GPL open source license does not allow you to embed uh, and distribute Alfresco within your products. Um, it also calls for you to submit any code changes back to Alfresco once you distributed um, that modified code. Um, so the OEM code line is more of a protection for your business. So you can actually take Alfresco, incorporate it into your product, you can uh, rebrand it, and then distribute it. So I think the most important things to take away here is that your IP is protected, that you can take Alfresco and make it your own, and then any um, any modifications or customizations you make to the code, you can fully distribute and make part of your business. Luis, if we can go to the next slide. So what does an OEM partnership actually entail um, from the standpoint of, of Alfresco? So again, I've talked a little bit that you actually do get an OEM license um, for the Alfresco Enterprise code line that you can uh, embed, modify, rebrand, and destroy.